Hello, ALC Small Groups. I'm Pastor Holly, and tonight I get the privilege of sharing about practical principles that will make wives successful. I'm going to use some principles from 1 Peter 3, but I think it's important for me to say that these principles did not come naturally to me. From fourth grade on, I was raised in a broken, divorced home that caused me at times to become a mom to my mom. As a preteen and teenager, I often had to run interference between her and the questionable men in her life. As you can imagine, that's not a natural way to learn respect and submission to your husband. Ben and I have a funny memory about our first date. I wouldn't even let him open the door for me. I was about three steps ahead of him most of the night, and I was independent, and no man was going to tell me what to do or lead me. So it wasn't really until I learned the practical principles of the Bible and actually saw them modeled through godly mentors that I was able to embrace what a successful wife's role looks like. 1 Peter 3, 1 through 6 says, Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives, when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart, with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, by submitting to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Most women understand that to be a successful wife, you have to be a work in progress. Because I feel that way about my own life, I decided to do some research on this subject for this teaching, and I found a really great excerpt from Tony Evans' book, For Married Women Only, Three Principles for Honoring Your Husband. We're going to dive into some of those principles, and I'm going to share how I apply them in my own life in order to be a successful wife. The first principle that Peter encouraged is to focus on respect. Peter described how husbands see your respectful and pure conduct. Always respect your husband, even when you don't think he deserves it. As a pastor, I've noticed through the years that many wives struggle to unconditionally respect their husbands. Instead, they want to respect them when they feel their husbands deserves it. But that's not what the Bible teaches. It's proposing the idea of unconditional respect that actually releases the power of the Holy Spirit to change your husband into the man of God you want him to be. To respect means to hold in high esteem, to lift up. I believe we are called to affirm our husbands and build them up. My husband is going to feed off of my respect, and this will make him a successful man. Husbands have the responsibility to love their wives like Christ loves the church, but our responsibility as wives is to respect our husbands. My husband needs to hear me say, I respect you, as much as I need to hear him say, I love you. Let me illustrate this principle with a common conversation that Ben and I have. He often wants honest feedback on his Sunday message. Usually, I tell him it was great, and that helps him have more confidence that he was able to present his message well. On the occasion that I do have some constructive criticism, I try to share my input in a respectful and gentle way so that he knows without a doubt that I support him, making it much easier for him to receive that. It's in our words that most respect and disrespect happens. If you respect your husband well, he will gain confidence that assures him you're the one person who wholeheartedly wants him to succeed. So we focus on respecting our husband. And secondly, focus on your inner beauty. The scripture says, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart. Husbands are often attracted to our outer beauty in the beginning of our relationship. 
but what keeps them attracted to us long term is our inner beauty. Proverbs 31.30 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Newsflash, men and women both age and we get wrinkles and our bodies change over the years. But for some reason, our culture seems to think that women shouldn't age, but it's okay for men to age. But I believe that we're supposed to take care of our outer bodies and do our best to work on our health and our wellness so that we can live a fulfilling life and be able to do all that God has called us to do. The scripture says we are his temple and therefore I want to take care of my temple that belongs to the Lord. But it's amazing how much more attractive we are when we're focusing on the inner beauty of our hearts. So how do I do that? I spend time with the Lord in prayer. I pray for my husband daily and sometimes throughout the day, especially when he has something big on his plate that day. And I don't pray though for God to change him, but rather to bless him and cause him to be successful. I focus on inner beauty in worship to the Lord. I spend time in his word through devotions, which allows God to always be changing me and to conform me to his image. I don't ever want to stop growing in my relationship with the Lord. I truly believe that's what keeps my husband attracted to me. Thirdly, we focus on submission. Peter says, for this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. Tony Evans describes submission like a yield sign. Think of two cars coming from opposite directions and one of them has to lead and they have to travel together. So one of them has to yield so that the other can take the lead. That's what it means to submit to your husband. That's a much better, better scenario than two cars coming at each other at a standstill honking at each other, which is what a lot of husbands and wives do. This doesn't mean though that wives don't have a voice. The Lord told Abraham to listen to his wife, Sarah, and to do what she asked. One quote I read was, a wise husband listens to his wise wife. Last year, I felt the Lord drop into my spirit the idea of going to work for Pregnancy Care Center. This was a major shift in my life and our marriage because I've always been a fulfilled, happy homemaker. I brought the idea up to Ben for feedback. I didn't come to Ben telling him what I was going to do, but rather I submitted the idea to him for input and for us to come into agreement about what was best. After we prayed about it, one morning, Ben felt like the Lord gave him a word from James 1, 5 that says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. He affirmed my decision to pursue and accept the job that I now enjoy at PCC. The primary way that a wife helps her husband is to help him become the leader that God has appointed him to be. A wife ought to be her husband's chief fan, chief encourager, and chief support system. But she can't help her husband take the lead if she is constantly tearing him down or fighting him for control. It really is okay to let go of control and empower him to lead like God has called him to. So we empower our husbands by focusing on respecting him, focusing on developing our inner beauty, and by focusing on submitting to his leadership. Thank you for joining in tonight. I included some questions for your small group to discuss at the end of this video. Have a great evening.